Janine and I are just seeking the Lord on where to, what the direction is with us as a church. I feel right now, as I said before, um, that God is doing something incredible. And I was, um, there's a, a, the scripture that is in my heart and that we have those words on the wall, which is always there, Daniel 11:32, part B, um, not A, um, but just B. But um, it's not because I wanted that piece of the scripture, but I'll keep out the rest. But the whole Daniel 11, chapter 11, is a, quite a sad uh, story, but this little bit of part B of verse of know God, be strong and do exploits, or the Bible says they that know their God will be strong and do great exploits. One of the things in the church for me is that we have a lot of people full of ch- in churches that love church or love the idea of it, um, but they don't have a knowledge of God. And the way that we have knowledge of God, the Bible tells us you do it through song, you do it through psalm, you do it through the teaching, you do it through all the different ways of discipleship. And so one of the things that, as I said, my goal is to get Janine out of the books and all that sort of stuff this year. So that means we've got to find, believe God for finance because I want to pay somebody. I won't be coming back into the fold as a uh, paid ministry um, because the past, the senior pastor's wage is actually the biggest wage, biggest thing in the church. And I believe that if the church is to achieve its mission, then which is to reach the lost and disciple men, men and women, I believe this, is that wages shouldn't be the major part. But the problem that we have living in a world that we live in today, churches just can't exist like they used to. We have to have compliances. We have to have insurances. We have to have these things. Otherwise, you cannot be a church. You cannot even exist. And we can all go, oh, that's just horrible and that's the way of the world. But that is the world we live in and God's placed us here. And so for me to come in would be, I believe, irresponsible um, when I can earn really good money outside, be blessed and bless my family. For years I've sown and I don't regret one minute of it of my life and my family where we've had to save really hard because pastor's wages are amazing. They're incredible, you know, not. But... I can't look back, I can honestly look at back on my life and not see, I've taken my family to Disneyland, I've lived in America, I've been there in America, so not lived, I've been there for two months, we stayed there on holidays, and then the second time I went for one month, and I look back at my life all the time, and I go, God, how is that even possible? I've been to Cambodia, yes, for mission trips, I've been for, to New Zealand, I've been, I just look at all the stuff that I've been able to do in my life, and the house that I live in, and I go, God, you're amazing. I, I, there is no physical way that this can... I look at this property. We own this flat out. We don't owe any money on it. Isn't that a blessing? That we are not in a position where we're having to beg, borrow. I don't want to be one of those pastors that gets up and goes, guys, we've we got to make the payment this week, so you need to be given good. If you give, if you know God, you'll give. If you know God, you'll pray for the sick. If you know God, you'll reach out to the lost. If you don't know him, you won't do this because if you don't know him, you won't know what's on his heart. And there is nothing that I can do to outgive him. I cannot give enough to him for what he's done for me. And so the passion behind knowing God is more than being, it's more than the last bit because everybody wants to do the exploits. Yeah? Everybody wants to do exploits. Everybody wants to go out and lay hands on the sick. Everybody wants to see miracles. Everybody wants to see their financial bank account just raise over the top and all that sort of stuff. But none of us want to get to know God in a way of intimacy. Of, you know, I was listening to Donna's message this morning. Do you know, can you understand why God is so, would be so upset at the world for not accepting his son because he's given us a jubilee. He's set us free and we don't want it. We're telling him, I don't want. And I, I know that the, 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 the thing of the church has been so in convoluted with processes and procedures and this is what you should and shouldn't do and all that sort of stuff. But the more I fall in love with God and the more I get to know him, the more I understand about his grace and his mercy for me and for people. For I have a desire at this church to be a church where those, there's a song that we were praying this morning that came into my brain again. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I don't know who sings it, but there's a, it's a secular song. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. 
Yes, some of you know it. I can hear it coming out. Well, there's a world out there searching. I haven't found what I'm looking for. My faith and my hope is that when people come here, that they will begin to experience something that they go, "Um, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I've been looking for. Christians and non-Christians alike, I want people to discover this place in a way where they go, I found what I'm looking for. But the, I have lots of people come into this church and lots of over the years we've had so many people, even before I was the pastor, they go, oh, this church is amazing, this church is amazing. Then when they, we settle, we go, oh, it's not amazing. You know why? Because we're all here. The church is never going to be an amazing place because we're in it. But what it is, it's a family. It's a place where we get to dine and feast on the things of God. It's a place where we grow together. You know, I've got three kids and not all of us get on all the time. Amazing. We don't all have the same opinion about the world. We don't have, we, you know, at dinner, our lunch at dinner, one of our big topics we avoid right at the moment is Israel and Palestine. Because I have a journalist daughter who has an opinion. I don't know. I've had a little chat. I was washing up the other day and I said, oh, I was thinking about my Jewish friend. The Jew, wow, he just went, woo. And I went, oh, okay, this is, not a, this is a no-go subject because in my house, we, have, we walk together. I'll talk about it at another time, but not when everybody's around. I'll talk about it with you privately, but don't bring it up at the table because this is where we enjoy each other. This is where we hang out. This is where we love. And this is the place I want to create. I want to create a place in this place through what God's gift has given me to be a man and a woman of God, to be a house where people can come and dine on the service of Jesus, where they can come and dine in the Holy Ghost and be set free from what binds them. I see a church today walking free. I see a church walking in power and I see a church walking in the knowledge of God, not afraid and not ashamed because the church that I see is a church that stands on its own and goes, God, you are faithful, you are true, and you are just, that I know you, I know you, and because I know you, I can stand in the midst of whatever goes on in this world, I can stand in the midst of everything that goes on in this world, no matter what happens, I can stand in this vision of going, God, you are my strength, it's not me, it's nothing I've done, it is the more that I get to know you, as I read his word, I begin, my heart begins to melt, I was watching a a movie this week, and it was called American Underdog, I recommend it, if you haven't seen it, it's a good movie. But at the very end of it, I was watching the movie and there was something, it's about a football player, a gridiron guy. And at the very end, he was, he was something happened at the end. Uh, uh, let me get the story right in my head. He got looked over and he was getting too old. And so he kept getting looked over, he kept getting looked over, he kept getting looked over and then one day he got a call by an old coach who everybody had looked over and the coach had come in and he built one of the most successful franchises. Uh, I think it was the Green Bay Packers or somebody like that. Uh, not the Packers, it was another one. Somebody, I know you, some people are nodding like this, so you've seen it. It was whatever the other group was. I think the Packers was the one he got kicked out of. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But I was sitting there watching it and I was crying because I just had just crying because I thought, God, this is amazing. And I felt the Lord speak to me. He said, and this is you. This is you are. This is your house. He said, people have looked over and glossed over you for years and years and years. They've looked at it and gone, what is that going on in that place? What is there? And he said, watch what happens when I begin to move because you've set yourself to know me. And I started to wait on him in that. And, you know, I I was sharing with someone yesterday, you know, as I've been reading my Bible, because that's my thing. I don't really care about the other two. The being strong and the bringing life bit, I don't, they're not my thing. They used to be, but I found if I do the first one, the other two come into play. The other two just come. I was sharing with someone yesterday through reading the word, you know, areas where I've struggled. You know, um, if I use the word lust, I I don't know where your mind goes with that, but I'm a male and uh, I don't know why that's a male thing. I really think that's stupid. Um, Because I know women that have struggled with other stuff too, but let's blame the men for all their problem. But... (laughs) But that, that area of thing, and Janine's been away for two weeks, and I, I, I was really interested in how God was dealing with things in my life. And if you know me, TV is a huge issue in my life. I think um, 
about two years ago, I would have been watching easily five to eight hours of television a night by the time I came home um, so as your pastor. So there you go. How's that? And so I was putting things in, and we're not this journey of that God had stirred my heart. I still love God. Don't, 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 because all of us sitting in church, we all love God, and we don't all do the things that we should do. So I don't want, this is not a point me, I'm better or you're better or look at that, how can that be? This is an honour, I'm a, Shane has said this a couple of times, Darren has this unique honesty about him. Um, A lot of people don't like it because I'm too honest. Um, I do apologise, I just believe that I'm sick and tired of people thinking that everything's perfect in people's lives and, you know, I struggle with areas when my son tried to kill himself and went on to drugs and I really struggled in my faith with that. I struggled trying to find where God was in that but I knew that God was real and I knew that God was doing something and this is the hope that I believe that God is doing in our church and so while Janine was away I think I watched two hours maybe three hours of television over the whole two weeks to for the whole time and I didn't even think about it. I didn't, it wasn't something I sat down, I was sharing with this person yesterday, I said, it wasn't me going, I don't want to watch TV, I don't want to watch TV, I don't want, I had no desire. I sat down to watch it a couple of times and I'd flick through all the stations that I had, all the thousands of movies and TV shows I could watch and I'm going, I've just wasted half an hour of my time, I'm going to go and do something more profitable. Why is that? Because I set myself to know God. And so when you set yourself, you see, if I put anything else in front of my eyesight, I'll chase it. But now that I've removed the stuff and I said, God, I want to know you, that was my simple prayer. And the prayer I have for this church is, God, that we would know you. God, that we would truly, truly know you. Because when we know him, we will always take the high road. Do you understand the high road part of life is that, I can be a low road, medium or a high road person. And if I'm a low road person, I will pay back anybody that or cut people off that do anything to me. If I'm a medium road person, I will begin to take people and go, you know, let's all treat each other fairly. But when they don't treat me fairly, I'll cut them off again. But when I'm a high road person, it doesn't matter what people do to me. It doesn't, you see, this is what the church has to get in, in, in our hearts and our heads is that if Wrong is done, it's got to be paid back. That is not true. Jesus went silent when he was accused. All he said was, you say you're a king, and he said, you say rightly that I am a king. That's all he said. The rest of it is silent. Well, I'm not meant to be a doormat. I don't even know if that's a true statement anymore. I don't even know if anymore I am not meant to be somebody who people despise and walk over because I have got this thing with God where God's grace and I want the church. I believe the church is the most powerful place in the planet that God breathes and brings hope to people. I believe it without a shadow of a doubt because it's not the building of the church. It's us, the people of the church. I want to extend this this building. I want to push it out another size. You know, and I think we could do it now. I think we could get ready for what God's doing. But you know what else I want to do? I want to build a, a pizza oven and a, 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 a bub, an outdoor kitchen out here. I want to build a table that's as long as this building because i got a picture in my head of when people come, they can come and sit and just sit at it. Just sit at it. All their problems, with all their problems, opposite sitting opposite somebody who's been a who's been a a, a a veteran believer and sitting in there and just sharing. And you know what it's like when you I don't know if you've seen one of those tables that's just long, like a big Italian table where people come in and sit down and there's food right down the middle of it. And people come and they dine and they're all one and they're equal. And somebody begins to say, This is amazing, and they say, My life this week has not taken a right turn. And the person opposite them goes, that's horrible. Can I pray with you? Can I believe you? Not the past pastor. Come over here. Come, Taz, come here, come here, come here. I want you to come and pray with the pastor. No, you came in because you're strong. You know God and you begin to go, God, you are going to bring hope to this person. And then we continue to eat at a big long table where people can come and cook food in the ovens and the thing all throughout the week because I've got a friend. I want him to come and know what it means to dine at the table. 
table, at a massive table. I can see two of them running down under the trees over there. A massive table where people can come with a coffee pot at the end. I can see stuff everywhere. But it's a vision that's in me because I want people to find Jesus more than anything else. Because they if they come and see me, all they find is a man. All they find is a broken piece of rubbish who has been bought, birthed in the fires of God. And the coal and the gold has turned into diamond. But I'm still a man because I want you to find Jesus because he is the answer. And when you find him, you will never, ever be the same again. But when you find church, you will just be another person who's religious. But when you find Jesus and let the Holy Ghost come on the inside and the fire and the passion and we stand in this place who are the broken when the broken come they're not finding another doctrine they're not finding people who are fighting with each other but they're finding people who are in love with Jesus and in love with the power of the ghost of the Holy Ghost who comes and brings life that's the church I see they that know God Full stop. The strength comes from knowing Him. It'll be the most Holy Ghost filled pizza oven I've ever seen. (laughs) If you know anybody with those skills who can help, I want to build, I honestly want it done by the end of this year. I can, and the table, I saw a guy the other day, he went and bought builder's planks, you know, big long timber builder's planks. He put them all together, four apart, three or four apart. And I was watching him go, I said, God, I could do that. Even I could build that. I wouldn't sit at it. (laughs) But there's people here who know how to do that. Well, if you're not here, you know someone. Because I, I tell you what, I watch people come into my house when I feed them. I watch my kids. One's walking with the Lord, one's not. The ones that are, the ones that aren't. And I watch them come in and I put the food on the table and they just laugh and tell stories. They tell us things about their week. And sometimes I get to pray with them and sometimes it's not the time. But it's where people begin to unwind. And I see this table. It's more than just a table and it's more than just an outdoor kitchen. It's a place where people can bring their friends and sit down I can see people in little groups coming and just saying, hey, I know a great place where we can cook up a big roast. And you bring your food out and you just stick it in there. It'll all be open and available. People will come and vandalise it. Most probably then we'll have to fix it. I would rather fix a problem than not do anything at all. People said about the cross, somebody's going to come in and vandalise it. Probably. But we'll fix it again. All the crosses, all the, nobody touched them. Amazing. I was expecting to come in one day and see cars had driven through them or something. But they didn't have to do that. Because God, God is amazing. Could I encourage you in this next six months of the year to set yourself to fall in love with God? When I started this journey in the middle when I had COVID and I started this journey of just reading his Bible and reading the word and I just, it dawned on me that if other religions can memorize their things, why can't we as believers at least pay attention to what is said in this word? That's all it was. And I said, well then God, if you're in there, then I want to know it. I want to know you. Because I'm tired of being a a believer who is just a believer. I don't want to crawl into heaven. I want to walk into heaven knowing that, God, I've done my best. And at 57 years old now, I could look back and go, well, you know, I need to probably start winding down. I think God is just getting me to wind up. And I can look across our church and see that we have an ageing church. And I don't mean that in a sad thing. I just think that God has got us ready because there's young people that are coming to this place that need mums and dads that are broken, that are hurting, that have no idea what's right or wrong, what's not even right and wrong, just no idea how to live their life. 
and you've got it. So I'm sorry if you thought you'd come here to retire. I'm praying that God will refire. I don't want all that junk that comes with it. I want, Janine and I have been praying. You know, Janine is a really deep technical person in the greatest sense. And why God put us together, I look at it because she was gorgeous. When I met her, and she still is, when I say was, but she still, when I met her, I remember, whew, any young man, whew, God hooked me. And then she shared, I remember on the night we sat down and I met her and she was trying to get rid of me. She said, I said, so what do you want to do? She said, I'm going to be a missionary in China. She wanted to be a missionary in China, but she told me that because she said, well, this will get rid of him. All the other guys I've told that to just leave. And he said, oh, and he said what did I do? And she goes, well, you said, that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> she said, nobody had ever said that to me before. And I said, well, Dale, you were pretty hot. And I said, I was going to say anything it took. She said, she just laughed and then we got talking and then as the months went by, she goes, well, I still want to go to China. And I said, well, then we'll go together. And she said, then nobody's ever said that to me. You know, they're all like, well, well I'm never going to go to China. And I said, well, if we're meant to be together and God wants us to be together and we were in China, we'll go to China. And then she's, you know, the China never came up again. <laughs> we just said, well, let's serve God. Let's serve him and be what he needs us to be. And we've had to work stuff out. We've had fights. We've had arguments. I go, that's just stupid. And here we are today, 35 years later. Thank you. 35 years later. Still arguing. Still in love. And still serving God. And my prayer for you and this church, for anyone who comes, is that they will find God's love. That the sin that they struggle with every day, they will experience it being taken. That the hurt and the heartache that life has dealt them will be no more. That when the memory of it comes, the joy of the Lord will be their strength. That when people are battling with sin and battling with issues in their lives, that when the enemy is like a beast crouching at the door, they'll just keep the door shut and not open to it. And Janine went away the first week. Oh, that's right. I did start to watch an action movie. I started to watch this movie because I watched part one and part two had just been released. I went, going to watch that. Got halfway through it. I felt the Holy Spirit going, do you want this? I was, oh, I was just about to wrap up. He said, do you want do you want this? Hmm. I said, no, I don't want it. I said, it's not actually doing anything for me, Lord. It's not feeding me like it used to. It's, it's nothing. It doesn't. So I turned it off. Again, right in a pivotal point. Seems to be like how God deals with me and things. Right at that pivotal moment. Yeah. So I just turned it off. And he said, son, he said, I can, you can watch all this stuff. You can do it. And it's okay. He said, but if you want to come to where I want you to go, I can deliver you from this stuff. You are free from it. I'll never forget it. It was just a moment in my living room, in my little media room that I have. It was just a moment. And I said, God, I want you more than anything. And I feel like at the moment I'm in this space with him where he's just going, I hear him so clearly around these things because it's an area that I struggle in. You may not struggle in it. Some of you, I can see you looking at me going, why would you be hooked on TV? There's so much garbage on. I was. Because it was a way of escape. Most people go to the movies to escape their world. That's why we do it. Most people go on drugs to escape their world. Most people drink because they want to escape their world. Let's be people that have a world around us that people want to be a part of. 
So I made a decision to be a high road person in the last week or two. I made that decision. It was a dumb decision because since I made that decision, I've had so many opportunities to be a low or medium road person. But I made a decision, even to the point when one of my family members rang me in a rage about a situation and was like, and I said, I said, hun, I said, we're high road people. And they said, what does that mean? So I explained them what I think it means. And they went, ah, I get that. Doesn't mean you can come and walk over me. It doesn't mean you can tell me what you think about me. Because I do have the right to say things. But a high road person is somebody that comes into this place knowing that people have value. Every person has value. I don't care who they are. In God's sight, they have value. The top of my coffee cup said, try something different. So I did. Three police officers came to the coffee shop. So I walked up to them. Because in my head, I'm a high road person. And I look at people and I go, they all have value. Now I think police and not police and fireys and all them have a tremendous value. My dad was one, so I have high respect. But I've never done this before. I've thought of it, but never done it. And they were sitting, they came up right next to us in the table next to us and they were waiting for their coffees. So I was looking at my cup that said, try something you've never done before. Okay. Excuse me, ladies. Yes, because they're police officers and they look quite intimidating when they look at you because they go, yes, because they're expecting something. And I just said, hey, I'm a pastor of a local church. Yes, because they were waiting for a report. They're obviously wanting me to say there's a crime going on. I need your help. And I said, we've just had a prayer meeting this morning and um, we prayed for you guys in the emergency service. We've actually done it for a couple of weeks now and we just wanted to say how much we appreciate you. And I said, I, haven't actually get the, I don't often get the opportunity to physically see somebody. And here you are. I'd just like to say thank you for the service. Well, her shoulders dropped, her face went up, and she said, thank you. I really appreciate that. Keeping it. Somebody said thank you. You see, there's people, you walk past new creations, sorry, you walk creations of God, walk past creations of God every day and yet we don't acknowledge them in one way, shape or form because I'm embarrassed, because of what will people think. But every day you walk past the new crea- a creation, not the new creation of the ones that come and find Jesus. But it doesn't mean they're not created by God. But we ignore each other. That's why we got the problems we have. But when you know him, I start to see him. When I walk past the person now, I smile. I get the weirdest looks when I walk around the shopping centre because I'm going like this. You know how many people don't smile? <laughs> Lots. I feel like somebody's going to come and lock me up somewhere because I'm just walking around with this goofy smile on my face and... And I'm a male too, and in this day, males smiling something, they're up to something. Yes, I am. I want you to know I think you're amazing. Why? Because when God is in you, you start to see him in people. I start to see him in the people that have hurt me. I've got major scars. But look, so have you all. Whose life has gone the way you thought it would? Who's sitting in the the best spot right now? But you see, when we know him, we can rest and go, God, you've got this.